Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another episode of PSVR News. This one's pretty big, we got two stories, they're kind of connected, uh, but they're pretty huge I would say, so I think maybe we should just get right into it. Before we do, quickly, just if you'd like to hit that like button or the subscribe button or whatever to help me out, so I would appreciate that. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So let's start off with Sony London's Twitter account. This went up yesterday, I wanted to make a video sooner, I couldn't unfortunately. Uh, but this is what I wanted to show you right here. Let's pop it up. So, Sony London tweeted this out saying, Planning to play Blood and Truth on PS5. And if you don't know, Blood and Truth is that game that they released, I think it was 2019. Uh, it was a really good game. Easily top 10 PS Viewer titles. These are the guys who made PS Viewer Worlds, where you had the Shark Tank kind of horror experience. You had the London Heist, and then the London Heist was so well received that they kind of expanded it with Blood and Truth. Uh, really well done game. Kind of feels a little bit like London gangstery, but mixed in with a little bit of like MI6 stuff, whatever. It's really good. So if you haven't tried that already, look into it. They say here that our latest updates means you already have the new enhancements for next gen to make the experience even better. So, and you got your guy here, big character in the game pointing to Blood and Truth is PS5 ready. Go down here, they give you some details about what actually is entailed in this update. So we got here higher resolution, higher frame rates up to 90 frames per second, uh, highest detail assets used at all times, and improved texture details. This is across the whole game as well as all of our free DLC. So this is kind of crazy. This blows everything wide open, all right? Because I think a lot of us, after the recent news we've been hearing, the only thing we've been hearing is that, you know, if you want to play PlayStation VR uh, on PS5, you can only do that through backwards compatibility, and as such, you will not be able to tap into the power of the PS5. But it appears, and this is PlayStation Sony London Studio, so this is a Sony-owned studio, and they themselves are saying, okay, we're going to put a patch out in the PS4. I don't think it's going to do anything for the PS4 version, I think this is this patch is just completely designed for the PS5. And it's probably gonna unlock the resolution, maybe. So I don't know what the resolution was on PS4, but I assume now it might hit the maximum 1080p, or maybe go even higher and then super sample that down to 1080p, which will give you the cleaner image and the best possible image you can get on the PSV or One headset. The higher frame rates up to 90 frames per second. I assume we're on 60 frames per second if that's what they're saying up to. I don't know if that maybe they just take the cap off that and it can hit that because they're saying up to not lock highest detail assets used at all times. Uh, so I'm kind of wondering about this one. Does this mean like they're using the cutscene assets in gameplay because sometimes like character models and whatnot will have like a higher poly count model in the cutscene and then in gameplay they're a little bit lower count to free up some horsepower for the actual gameplay itself. And then finally, improved texture details. This is one I'm wondering, did they just add in this patch, like higher res textures or just better textures in this patch? Or are these improved textures like from cutscene models and stuff like that? So that's super exciting. And that raises just a whole bunch of questions. Now all of a sudden we can look at Hitman. Hitman 3 coming out in January, we can say, okay, well Hitman can do something like this take advantage of the power of the PS5. And basically every game that you're looking forward to on PS4 now all of a sudden they do have the potential to take advantage of the PS5. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are probably thinking, well, Firewall, are we going to see benefits to Firewall? You'd have to keep in mind, well, first of all, number one, I don't know. Uh, this is just my guess, but I would say is that like increasing the frame rate for some PS5 players might give like an unfair advantage, so they wouldn't want to do anything that would be unfair to those who are still playing on PS4, if you know what I mean. But think of all the single player games like Blood and Truth that could benefit from this, uh, this type of a situation where you can put a patch out in the PS4 version designed to take advantage of the next generation hardware. That's very cool. That's very exciting. I'm delighted to hear it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts is on this, as well as, you know, is there any games in particular you would like to see this type of a thing happen to? Resident Evil 7, maybe? Of course, it's gonna be a case-by-case -case thing. Not every developer is gonna be like, well, it's not worth our time or money to actually go back to these games and release an update for them. But if you had the choice, what would you pick? And let's move on to story number two, which is connected to this. So, let's talk about PSV. 
PSVR 2 and a huge hint from Sony that yes, the PSVR 2 is on the way. Now I'm on a website here, this is a Japanese website, so I've used the Google Translate from English to Japanese, so there might be some stuff that's a bit wacky in terms of wording and getting lost in translation or whatever. But this is brought to my attention from Twitter user Nibel, who posted a little extract, but I want to go into this article and I want to pull up the full thing. So this is just basically a conversation with a couple of gentlemen from Sony, Mr. Ito, but this is the guy down here that we're interested in, particularly for PSVR. This is Hideaki Nishino, I believe, and he is the Senior Vice President uh, for Platform Planning and Management at Sony Interactive Entertainment. So I just want to scroll all the way down to when they start talking about the PSVR aspect of PS5. It's quite a lengthy article, so you might want to check it out just to see other interesting tidbits about the PS5. So we get down to this part here. The person writing the article says, in fact, another piece of hardware is involved here. So PlayStation VR or PSVR or PSVR, which is a peripheral device for virtual reality is compatible with PS5. However, it is not supported by the title of PS5 only. So what they mean there is, there is no PS5 only PSVR game, but by the compatible function of a PS4 title this is a little disappointing. So we know this already, this is what we were led to believe, this is what we were all kind of a little bit bummed out over, is that you can only use PSVR via backwards compatibility on a PS5. So Nishino says, this is also a matter of thought. PSVR is supported by PS4 compatible function. However, I do not intend to simply dismiss it as compatible. So we're not dismissing PSVR on PS5 is not just compatible. So then he goes into a little more detail down here. It is impossible to say that the person who purchased the PS Viewer will not be able to connect when switching to the PS5. This sentence is a little bit kind of messy in the translation, so I'm not 100% sure what that means, but doesn't matter, I don't think. He says, also, I think there is a boost merit that PS5 improves the experience. So we've heard about this boost talk in the past. And now with Sony London Studio, we can see that they're putting out these patches that allow for better utilization of the boost. And then this last part here is the most exciting, most interesting, uh, most mm, optimistic for us as PS viewer owners. He says, however, the answer to Mr. Nishida's question is, I would like to expect PS5 to have a VR experience suitable for PS5. I can't comment any further, but I'd like to expect it and then he laughs, as presumably maniacally. So this here has to be a hint towards PSVR 2. He's saying, I would like to expect the PS5 to have a VR experience suitable for the PS5. He's saying, the one, what we have now, this isn't suitable for the PS5. We're still supporting us, we're not dismissing us. It's not simply compatible, it's gonna be boosted by the PS5, and now we're bringing out these patches, at least one patch, that's gonna take advantage of the PS5's power on PSVR 1, but, we have something cooking. Something's in the oven that's going to take full advantage of the PS5. Get hype, son. That's that's the translation. He's At the very end there, he's saying get hype. You know? And I think we should. So I'm really happy to make a positive video in regards to PSVR 2. The future of VR on PS5. This is a good day. This kind of puts like my last few videos where we're like concerned about Jim Ryan's comments and stuff like that. This is kind of easing that a little bit. The big problem here though is that Sony, they're not putting out a clear black and white message that cannot be misinterpreted. That's what they really need to do, I think. Right now it's all muddled, it's jumbled, two days away from release of the PS5, and it's only now we're hearing stuff like this. So it's really confusing, I don't understand why they're doing things the way they're doing, but if we're understanding things correctly, I think we have a lot to be optimistic about, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this below in the comments. What you think this means, I think, I'm like, I'm positive it means PS Viewer 2. Plus, maybe I'm missing something, maybe I'm missing a trick. Does this kind of ease your fears, maybe, about the future of PS Viewer on PS5? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that is it for this video, lads and ladies. Before I go, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. In particular, let me give a huge thank you to the following top tier Patreon supporters, including welcoming back to the top tier Columbus Thomas III, Tradition, Pete Hawkins, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Crumb, and Chopped 517. Thank you very much for coming back to the top. Columbus Thomas III, and thank you to all the rest of the Patreon supporters for that enormous generosity. Really do appreciate it. Really does help this channel keep taking over, keeps things nice and moist. If you would like to join on the Patreon, 
the link to that will be in the description as well but if not a simple like comment subscribe if you haven't already that kind of usual youtube and shite you know how it is would be very much appreciated finally let me thank decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos you can check him out at decepticon.com link to which will be in the description as well and with that i will finally end this video lads and ladies thank you for watching please stay moist